A huge shout out to my friend Chef Jason Carr of Tropicana Field, home of the Tampa Bay Rays, for this recipe. Hey guys, welcome back to another CO Guy Stuff. Today we're making a traditional Vietnamese beef pho. And for those of you that haven't had it, it's extremely healthy, very delicious, but rather expensive, especially if you have to buy all your ingredients for the first time. Now I'm going to be making multiple batches of this, so I went ahead and got bigger batches of stuff to save a little money in the long run, but I'll show you some alternatives for making just one batch. And even if you never want to make this yourself, I encourage you to look for a local restaurant and give it a try. Basically, for those of you that aren't in the know, it's a giant bowl of delicious broth that cooks the food in it. You can have beef, seafood, chicken, pork, vegetarian, all kinds of different stuff. So what we're doing today is a combination of beef tendon balls, and this is thin cut bottom round. You can find this fairly easily in many grocery stores, or you can have a flank steak cut super thin by the butcher, or you can freeze it for 20 minutes and slice it yourself. Both of these work very well. The point is it needs to cook very easily because only the hot broth cooks this meat. It's put into the bowl raw, kind of like a Mongolian barbecue. We are using a nice big chunky piece of ginger. We're gonna slice this up and grill it real quick. And that goes into the broth, along with half of an onion, same deal there. A couple limes, just for garnish, along with some cilantro. Or you can use some hot peppers, some sriracha sauce, however you wanna dish it up afterwards. This is a real nice combo, the lime and cilantro. Now, we're gonna home make the beef broth. Now, if you get it in a restaurant, it's even beyond this. They will be making their broth usually for a day or more. So it is steeped in flavor. We're gonna be doing ours for 10 hours. You can do it more if you want to, but 10 is what I would say for the minimum. And we're gonna be doing it in a crock pot. You could also do it in a large stock pot if you have a good stove. It's gonna be a little uh, expensive depending on your electric or gas bill, but the crock pot is super easy and everybody has those. You do need a big one though. You can't use the small ones. We got a big bag of bean sprouts. It goes into the bowl also. The spices you need, if you want to do it yourself, are whole cinnamon sticks, whole cloves, whole fennel seeds, whole coriander seeds, star anise, and shoot, you know, there's one other I forgot to grab here. I'll put it in the link down below. But that's only, only get that if you plan on doing multiple batches. If you just want to try it once, get yourself a pre-pack of pho spices. Now, where do you get this kind of stuff? You go to your local Asian or Oriental market. They're gonna have all this imported stuff that you do not find in grocery stores, such as the pre-made spice pack. Also, such as the rice noodles. You got a couple choices. Depends on your area what you're gonna have. Just about any Asian or Oriental market is going to have dried rice noodles. And these, by the way, are a lot healthier than regular pasta, usually less than half the carbs. You wanna get the really, really, really tiny hairline ones, right? But if you go to a larger Asian market, they're gonna have a refrigerated section, and then you don't have to use the dry ones. You can use the better fresh ones, a lot better flavor out of fresh. That goes for pasta too. If you ever have the choice, get the fresh pasta, the refrigerated section. And we're also gonna use a bit of really good Vietnamese Fish sauce, very important. All the flavor comes through in that guy right there. Uh, the main part of the beef broth is beef bones, specifically broth or soup bones. There are basically three things you're gonna find in stores. Luckily mine is carrying a lot of organic or healthy foods. It's kind of a popular thing now with, I guess, women in America to make their own broth, right? You know, just for anything, to stay healthy or whatever. So they've got these really convenient one pound packages of marrow bones and the marrow is what you want. That's where all the flavor comes from. So they got these leg bones already pre-sliced in one pound packs. You need four pounds of them. Um, if you have a real butcher in your store, you're probably gonna have access to bones. Anything like Walmart or Sam's Club or something like that, they don't have in-house butchers. Everything comes in pre-packed, you're not gonna find it. Knuckle bones, leg bones, or these pre-made marrow bones as they're called work and that's what you want. We also need just a little bit of sugar. I'm using Splenda. 
Um, it, it it simply works. It's awesome stuff. You can substitute this for sugar in just about everything. I think that covers it. It's really easy to prepare. Most of it is just wait time. The first thing we have to do is clean off the bones. And you do that simply by putting a gallon or so of water in a big pot, bring it to a roaring boil, blop in your bones for 10 minutes, all the gunk comes off of it, dump out the water, rinse them out, and you're done. We're gonna toast up our spices. I'm gonna go ahead and use up this pack for this first time, but same stuff. We're gonna toast up the spices in a pan. That gets them real flavorful. That'll go into the crock pot. The water goes in, and then everything sits and just gets flavorful overnight or during the day if you're doing it this will work to prep the other stuff it's done right before we're going to eat these are already pre-cooked you just boil them to heat them this just gets sliced up and goes in raw and everything else goes in as garnish and that's it so let's get going okay the water's at a boil in go all the bones just boil these for 10 minutes Dump the water out, rinse the bones off, put them right into the crock pot. Now while the bones are boiling, what you want to do is put a pan on medium to high heat and toast up all your spices. Cardamom pod is what I couldn't remember at the beginning. You just want to do this for three to five minutes until they really start giving off aroma. And then it goes into the pot, same as the bones. But we're not done with the pan yet. Okay, everything's really starting to open up. Seeds are starting a little popping going on, so into the crock pot they go. They're done. Keep your pan hot. A little bit of canola or vegetable oil. Heat it up. Cut a white onion in half and skin it. As soon as the oil's hot, put it in. And the ginger, thinly sliced. Flip the ginger over. About halfway through, we're just looking for a normal golden brown, like a deep fried color. Now that's all smelling real good. Let's see how the bottom of the onion's looking. Perfect. All right, done with the pan. Everything goes right into the crock pot. Beef bones are done. Now all we have to do is drain this, just rinse them off real quick, and then they go into the crock pot. In goes three tablespoons of fish sauce and a teaspoon of sugar. Now we're just gonna let this go on low for 10 hours. So just an update here, we're about three hours in. You can see it's already taking on a lot of deeper colors. It started off obviously very clear before, but an hour into it, the house started to really smell good and you smelled the star anise, the licorice. And now the cinnamon is really coming up. So the, the scent of what's cooking is really changing. It smells delicious. Okay, so now what we need to do, taste it. We're gonna add some more seasoning and fish sauce if we need it. Oh yeah, and it definitely needs something. I'm gonna put a couple tablespoons of salt in and another tablespoon of fish sauce. Now if you do have to re-season, give it a good hour after you put whatever you need in for it to reincorporate. Now we're gonna cook up our garnishments and our meat of the bowl because we're about ready to eat. First we're going to basically heat up our tendon balls. They're already pre-cooked. You just need to put them in boiling water for a couple minutes. In the meantime go ahead and slice up your beef. If you did a big batch just freeze the rest. Just little bite size real thin pieces that's what you're looking for. And just do enough for what you're going to eat right now. Alright the beef balls are done. Take them out and cut them in half. They're going to go in our bowls. Now we're ready for the rice noodles. Follow the instructions on your package. In this case, it only calls for 10 seconds in the water. So be ready to get them back out. Now we're ready for the good stuff. You need to take out all the solids and then strain all the liquid into a pot. You can even do it a second time if you're unsure. Boom, and there we go. Garnish how you like. I love lime and cilantro. Like I said, you can make this all sorts of different ways. Put the noodles on the bottom, little bean sprouts. Ooh, it's hot, 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 hot. 
put your beef strips in there, your beef balls, and you're good to go. Cooks in just a couple minutes just sitting in there. Gotta sit it down. Bon appetit, guys.